plans of medical practice. OK, I've put that in for the due doctor. There was a prescription done for you on Friday. You've got numb lips. Have you got anything else? Too many patients. You're throwing up. Is it getting worse? Too few doctors. Hi, I was wondering, has any uh, INR results been phoned through? With too little time. Mm. Thank you. We're burning out. We can't keep going on. As the NHS is under pressure like never before. We feel helpless. We feel guilty. We feel sad. Okay. We've been in two GP practices in the Lothian region. Now they're coming for health care and we can't provide it. You could say these GPs are on the brink, but actually it's gone way beyond that. You go home thinking, did you provide the service that was safe for patients? We see doctors breaking down and getting out. And when that happens, everyone loses. We can always see, you know, we're tired. At Dander Hall Medical Practice in the east of Edinburgh. Hi, Dr. Peter, the surgery. Hi, how can I help? There are always more patients for Dr. Merrill Peat to call. For the list size as it currently stands at four and a half thousand patients, my job really should be being done by three GPs. Wow. And You're the, one, one GP for four and a half thousand patients. One partner for four and a half thousand wow. patients, yes. Um, and that is untenable. Hi, I'm just wondering if there's any more prescriptions come through. New housing on their doorstep means the number of patients has grown by 50% in six years. Merrill is ultimately responsible for them all. There should be three salaried GPs here. Where are they? You didn't want to resign then? No, I was enjoying my work. Dr. Headley Philpot used to be the other partner in this practice. He and Merrill tried for five years to hire a third doctor. No takers. We've got an excellent team here and frustrated because if we could just find one GP in order to um, help spread the load, then I would have been able to continue on uh, hopefully in indefinitely. And so this became a job that made the doctor himself unwell. My uh, working day was so intense that I found that I couldn't um, sustain that workload and so informed the health board that I'd have to resign uh, in order to maintain good health. In Scotland, the number of full-time equivalent GPs fell by 3% over the past three years. What we're seeing here is not just one crisis, but several different crises, all hitting at the same time. And the result is that this surgery has just become completely overwhelmed. Recruitment crisis meets the retention crisis. In Dander Hall, it costs them not one partner, but two. You get home late, you get home ratty. <laughs> um, you get home emotional, you know. Um sometimes cry for no particular reason. I've had brilliant help from our long-term local, but it, it is horrendous and it can't go on. So therefore I felt I had no option but to resign. For Merrill, this is what system failure looks like. The surgery she loves has lost all its salaried GPs when they've never needed them more. It has basically collapsed. When I was on call, that was uh, the number of emergencies we had to see. Over at Linden Medical Practice, west of Edinburgh, Dr Annie Lomas is explaining which patients are emergencies she has to see, who she'll telephone and who will have to wait. The pink slots are the ones we hold back for, 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 for doctors to book only. There isn't any availability for the rest of the week because um, we're slammed. It's Taylor's job to deliver the bad news. It's just the abuse you get, sometimes it gets to you. A lot of people are nice, a lot of people respect it, but a lot of people think that they should be able to see a doctor straight away, which I understand, but it's not the way it used to be, unfortunately. It's a lot harder. Once more, one crisis leads to another. Hospital waiting times mean more work for GPs. I've still got a lady on my books three years later waiting for this hip replacement. She's still under me. I am still having to manage all her pain. She's now had clots in her lungs because of her lack of mobility. You know, people are getting sicker whilst they wait. I have um, 
eyes on the screen. Is that okay? Just have a wee look at how busy we are today. And he's concerned the workload is unsafe. Does she need help? You know, the BMA recommends 25 patient contacts a day. That's their safe working limit. You've seen our screen. A duty doc can deal with 50 in a morning. In a morning. You know, can, yeah, that's just bonkers. Ring fenced it One morning this winter, it got too much. I was beginning to burn out. And I knew because we'd had a doctor off sick and it had been a horrific week. Annie learned of a sudden patient death in hospital. Nothing to do with her clinically, but it floored her. It was unexpected, but I completely lost it. And that is when I went to my senior partner and said, oh my goodness, and you know, da da da. And I'd read the, the report, um, the, 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 the A&E letter, and he was like, y you're done. And I was like, yes, mm. I'm done. Were you in here just... just Bawling my eyes out. <laughs> we can already see, you know, we're tired. At Dander Hall, although Headley's back helping out while Merrill works her notice, the situation is bad and she's worried for patient safety. Bringing patients into the surgery, you see them, you make decisions. Have you got time to sort them out? Quite often you don't. So, yes, I do feel it's an unsafe situation. This was a great profession. Great profession. Um, I can't say that now. Dander Hall is set to change hands next month, but it all leaves plenty of questions for the Scottish Government. And this doctor has a few of her own. Do you hear? Do you care? Are you hearing what the people at the front line, the people that are actually doing the job that you have responsibility over, are you listening to us? Because at the moment, it feels like they aren't. Are you listening? I sat down with Scotland's Health Secretary, Hamza Youssef. Of course, I uh, meet with frontline staff very regularly. What I can't do is wave any magic wand to ensure that our NHS, uh, all of the problems the NHS is, are, is facing are wiped away in a matter of weeks or even a matter of months. So I've been always up front with all of our staff that we will invest in them, we will pay them uh, fairly. Uh, and I think you can see the proof of that by the fact that Scotland, of course, is the only part of the UK that doesn't have nurses or ambulance staff on strike. Yet. Yet, and we'll try to do our best to make sure that can, remains the case. GPs in primary care feel that it is not safe for patients. Not safe in the NHS, that's pretty fundamental. Are they wrong? Well, what I would say for clinicians, whether it's GPs, and I've heard some doctors say similar, that they don't feel they're giving the best treatment possible or that it's not safe uh, for patients, we'll always ensure that we will invest in the NHS to make it as safe as possible. You acknowledge there are parts of the NHS in Scotland that aren't delivering safe care for patients. No, what I'm saying is... That, well, that's what the doctors are saying. Well, that's what a doctor or some doctors may well have said to you. What I'm saying is that we have a level of care that we have always prided ourselves on giving to patients up and down the country. There are instances where people are not getting that level of care. Clearly, if they're waiting 10 hours for an ambulance, they're not getting the level of care that we'd want. And what, and what we're doing and what I'm doing is spending every waking moment to try to resolve that. Let me show you a flavour of what GPs, these are from the Lothian region, have been telling us. It is horrendous and it can't go on. We can always see, you know, we're tired. That shouldn't be happening in a well-run NHS. Well, again, I think most people would understand that almost three years of a pandemic, and if I take the last few weeks, extraordinary levels of flu, and of course, our GPs should not be feeling as upset, angry, and certainly not wanting to quit the profession in the way that uh, uh, the individuals that you've shown me uh, are, are, are seeking to do. They're not just wanting to quit, Mr Youssef. They're actually quitting well, when you need them more than ever. Well, if you look at the latest headcount figures for GPs, they've increased. Now, of course, what we've got to make sure is what we're doing is not just filling up a leaky bucket. But GPs actually there in front of patients, you want full-time equivalent GPs. Has that number gone well, up just, well, or just, down? Well, just remember, the reason why work time, uh, whole-time equivalents might well not be up, uh, well, aren't up, is, 
is, is because of the fact that, of course, flexible working is something that we promote. Our fact check team have been comparing the performance of your government versus how it was in 2013. And what they found was the number of people waiting more than four hours in A&E is now four times higher last year than it was in 2013. The number of people on inpatient care waiting lists for more than 12 weeks is more than 100 times higher than it was in 2013. That's a pretty shocking indictment, isn't it, of your government's performance? So anything that's happened between 2013 and now that you can think of that might have impacted health services across the world? A hundred times worse. Anything? Mr. Yusuf. I mean, the biggest global pandemic in a century, where you had to pause elective care for over a year, you had to pause cancer screening for months, and of course there's going to be an impact on that, not just in health services in Scotland, but I think if you look at any comparative stats of any health system, certainly across the UK, you'd find that they're all facing the impact of the global pandemic. Another thing the doctors, frontline workers do say is that this is not just two or three years in the making. You may try and blame COVID. These are problems going back 10 years. Nobody's blaming COVID. You don't COVID. have a shortage of doctors no, because of blame, COVID. Nobody's blaming, blaming COVID. What we would say is, if you're asking me were the challenges pre-COVID in the health service, of course there was. But equally, there's no getting away from the most significant challenge that it's ever faced. And I'm there and the government is here to support our NHS, support our staff and uh, ensure that patients get the treatment they, 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 they deserve and they expect. And Mr Yusuf, thank you so much for speaking to us. Thank you. And for more coverage on the emergency of the NHS, visit our website, channel4.com forward slash news, where you can read our latest fact-checked articles and watch our reporting from across the UK on the unprecedented crisis facing the NHS.